What is up ladies and gentlemen, CJ the Cheese DJ here and today guys I was showing you some of the best traps that you can use to trap and tame creatures in Ark. Now guys there are quite a few of these traps here so I've got timestamps down below if you want to check out each in particular trap. There's about six traps in total so without further ado let's get started into it. Now guys this first trap here is a very basic one. You can pretty much use this universally for everything. Whatever will fit inside of a two foundation wide structure will fit in this trap. We're talking theories, trikes, wolves, raptors, deinonychuses, anything like that will fit in this trap. So for example, we're gonna get a trike in here. Now, trikes are easy because they're slow, they're super just slow, and they don't really deal too much damage unless they get their charge attack off. But for example, you can see here, we've got this trike here attacking us. We're just gonna kite it into this trap at the back here. Let it get its charge off and we can just simply walk straight through the door frame, come around the side here and close the gate. Now this will work on stegos, theries, all that sort of stuff. All that good stuff will trap these creatures. Now, this trap here is kind of more of a permanent sort of trap. Um, so if you've got a particular spot where you like trapping creatures and stuff like that, or if you're using the S Plus mod, go right ahead and, and use this trap. But it is essentially uh, eight foundations wide by about 32 stone door frames high. Now you can cut this shorter, you can make it too long or three foundations long. Uh, that will cut down your costs quite a lot, but we do have cheaper options if you do not like using this trap. And that trap is this one right here. So guys, this trap here is a three by two. Uh, you can see there, so six foundations and 24 stone door frames. And then you need two, oh sorry, four, ramps depending on the terrain that you build on if you build on a bit of a slope you will get away with four if not you will need six so you can see here we've got the slope and once again this can be used to tame theories trikes stegos in my opinion this trap is a little bit easier to use due to the fact that we don't have to worry about a gate frame having to close down on us for example you can see here this dodicarus who so valiantly volunteered to run away from us apparently okay don't want a piece of us that's for sure we've got another trike here We'll get this guy and you can see here that all you need to do is walk, kite it up the staircase, walk through your door frame and once it's up there it's trapped. Now the cool thing about this trap is universally you can actually make it smaller, bigger, however size you want to make it depending on the creature that you will want. The maximum stone door frame height you would need to go is 4 high and that is for a spino because spinos can get out of 3 high door frames. So you can actually build this trap and use it to tame rexes, theries, spinos. Um, anything like that. Any of the big boys, even Brontos, as long as it's four high. If not, then you, you know, you can add to it and you can keep it at a two high. But this one is definitely more favorable over this one. And to build it, it's very easy. All you need to do is six foundations down on the ground, and then you need to make the stone door frames too high. Very easy, six foundations, 24 stone door frames. And I would recommend building all of these traps out of stone, except for the next one that we're about to show you. Due to the fact that dinos cannot, well, majority of the dinos cannot break stone. Only dinos that can break stone are Gigas and Theries. But even with uh, stone door frames and stuff like that, Theries will rarely break through these stone structures because they need to get a lot of their beak attacks off and uh, they don't always use that attack. But that's essentially all you need to do in order to build this trap. It's very easy to build. Uh, if you do struggle to get the staircases placed down because they only have a range of two foundations, what you can do is you can actually just place another foundation underneath at the front here, connecting up this one. So you can see that that will allow you to put the extra two staircases down the bottom here, allowing you to kite whatever it is that you need to up into this trap. Alrighty guys, so this next trap, you will need three metal, sorry, four metal dinosaur gateways because you will be trying to trap a Giga with this trap. Now you can use this trap to try and trap other larger carnivores like your Rexes and Spinos. However, this one is a little bit more expensive because you will need to be building it out of metal. So I would recommend building it out of one of the uh, previous traps if you're after like a Rex or a Spino. I would say this one is exclusively for the Gigas. Uh, and in my opinion, is probably the cheapest, easiest trap you can use to tame a Giga. So three, sorry, four dinosaur gateways and a couple of bear traps. You wanna try and stick the bear traps in as close to uh, the other end as you can. And essentially the goal here is to kite the Giga into the trap get it stuck in the bear traps and then whack down the fourth dinosaur gateway and that'll cause the Giga to be stuck in here. So all that remains is to grab our Giga over there and get him stuck in this trap. Now I would recommend using a flyer or a land based tame, uh, something that's fast and can obviously outrun Gigas. Now if you find that your Giga is not interested in trying to attack you, 
just let it kill everything in the area. You can see that it, this is the phase that they're going through, the teenage phase of not wanting to go after anything. So you can see here, the further away it gets from you, the more stuff it will find to kill. Wait for it to come back around, and then you want to try and line it up as straight as possible so that you have uh, as least amount of problems as possible, for example, at killing this Procoptodon and deciding to completely bypass our trap. Now you can see here that hopefully this Giga is lined up perfectly and if we did it correctly, he should be coming after us. And you can see there he is now stuck in that trap. What you need to do then, you've got about 30 seconds, is to run around to the backside of said Giga. Don't worry too much about it trying to eat you. Once you get to about the halfway mark, it will not be able to bite you. And you can see that that is why we stick multiple uh, bear traps in there. Just in case it breaks out of the first one, you still have access to another one. And if things go terribly wrong, you can always get away by it getting stuck in another bear trap. And just like that, guys, the Giga is trapped. All that remains is to trank it out and to tame it. And using this method, most inexpensive way I've been able to find and determine myself, if you want the extra precaution of things not attacking the Giga, you can put spike walls up. However, with Gigas being the top of the food chain, you will find that really nothing will uh, voluntarily attack them. If you've got carnivores or something like that, like raptors or danos running around the area trying to eat other stuff, the spike walls will stop them from damaging the Giga. But guys, that is how you go about building a Giga trap for your Giga or a large carnivore trap. Entirely up to you what you want to use it for. Like I said though, I would recommend just using this one for the Giga trap. Let's move on to the next one. Now guys, quickly, I'll show you how to build this trap. You do need to be a little bit specific with it because if you set the uh, gates too close to each other or too far away, it won't actually trap the Giga. So what I like to do is I like to put down the initial gate first. So you can see here, this is the front one. So we've got that. Now you can see there that it will give us snap positions. We don't want those snap positions. What I like to do then is to line up the green reticles with the gate frame that you've just put down. Walk back a little bit, walk out a little bit till you, there's a little bit of a gap and just like that. So this gap here is not enough for the Giga to get through and it is also enough space for it to actually get through to reach the traps. If you build it too narrow, like for that example, like for like this example, uh, you won't actually be able to trap the Giga. It won't actually fit through and get into the bear trap. So you want to make sure that you've got it set the right distance apart. So once again, just repeat the same process. You can see there, walk back a little bit to the right, left a little bit, and just like that. And that is plenty of space for your Giga to get in here and get trapped by the bear traps. So let's move on to the next trap. Now guys, this next trap is a griffin trap. One of the easiest traps you can use, it is a little bit over the top to be honest. Uh, you can make it a little bit smaller and uh, make it too high if you really wanted to. But if you like to be on the safe side of things and make sure that you get it the first time around, this is definitely a trap for you. So all it is is six foundations, two by three, it is uh, three door frames high and then eight ceilings. Now, you'll see here that it runs off into pillars. That's just to make it a bit easier for you to run through and because you can actually fit pteranodons in between that. So if you are using a flyer to try and trap your griffin, you can simply see spin through that and your pteranodon will fit through fine. Whereas the griffin will have more of a tougher time getting through that. So once you've done that, all you need to do is find yourself a griffin and you'll find that getting the griffin in here is relatively easy. So guys, once you've got the griffin's intention, all you need to do is kite it towards this trap. Now, kiting griffins is pretty easy. They do do a bit of damage and they do attack the rider. So do be a bit careful, but all you need to do is line it up in a straight line. Unless of course the griffin decides to, for some unknown reason, attack a freaking giga like an idiot. So like I was saying, once you've got the Griffin aggroed on you, take a little bit of a spin around because it does have quite a large turning radius. And all you need to do is simply fly straight through the trap on a straight angle, land, and you'll see that the Griffin will follow shortly following suit. And just like that, you've got yourself a Griffin trapped. All you need to do is come around, close the door, and just like that, easy Griffin trap. Once that's done, all you need to do is simply knock it out and you have got it tamed. Now, another inexpensive option for this, if you are talented enough to use the traps, is to use the RG trap. Now, the RG trap is very similar to that trap. However, I don't like using it because majority of the time, the griffins will be able to fly out of the top of this. All it is, is four dinosaur gateways. Two dinosaur gates, and that is it. You need to separate them at a substantial difference in terms of, uh, like, length. Otherwise, you'll find that it'll be too small. So... You've got a couple of meters to play with here. So you can see it's pretty simple. All you need to do is take a couple steps back and that is more than enough space for an RG to fit through and for you to run through and be able to close the gate. 
And you see here is an RG that we have trapped earlier. And all we had to do was the same sort of process as the Griffin. Cut it in and you can do this one on foot. It is sometimes easier to do uh, the Argent trap on foot because you won't actually be able to get a Pteranodon out of that trap. So you can see here, all you need to do is, well, it depends on how far you set the dinosaur gateways apart. The majority of the time you can get a Pteranodon actually in there. Okay, this guy's just aggroing on the corpse. Majority of the time you can fit Pteranodons uh, through these traps. You can see there our one fits through fine. So if you do have a Pteranodon and you do build it a certain length apart, um, by all means use the Pteranodon because all you need to do is simply fly through and you'll be fine. So yeah, I would heavily recommend using this trap if you want to tame Argies up. It is one of the cheaper traps to use Argies, but yeah, heavily recommend it. So guys, let's move on to the last trap and this is your big herbivores slash carnivores. Once again, this is entirely up to you. A behemoth gate is a very expensive to create where what you could do is you could just make one of these smaller traps over here, just like this, and just expand it out to make it four wide. It's entirely up to you. The behemoth gateway adds a little bit of protection for that creature, but it's entirely up to you. But same sort of scenario. All you need to do is kite a herbivore or a rex or a spino, anything like that into this trap, walk around, close the gate, and you will be fine. Generally though, you won't actually need to build a trap for the Bronto because of the fact that uh, it can actually just get tranked out by walking because you're actually faster than it. But you can see here, we've got this big boy right here. Let's kite him towards us and you'll see that he was just one big slow stompy boy. You do also have to make sure that you keep uh, herbivores attentions because they do have a slightly less aggro timer than uh, carnivores. Carnivores kind of stay permanently aggroed on you, whereas herbivores do lose interest. So you will need to constantly try and trank this guy out while you're cutting him towards your trap. Otherwise, he will lose interest in you. Um, but essentially, same sort of fundamentals apply here. Cut it towards the trap. All you need to do is run through or fly over if you have a flyer. Jump off. Get his attention a little bit more. Come on, mate. Can you come? Can we get a tasty Pteranodon? He's going he's gonna to walk out because he's lost interest in us. So that's what you need to make sure of. So make sure that you keep his interest. Otherwise, yeah, you'll find that he'll, he'll walk out. And especially if he gets that turning off, because their turning radius is just so freaking ginormous, you will struggle to uh, to get it. And of course, there's a freaking RG messing this up once again. So yeah, but you can use this trap for Rexes and Spinos. However, the Behemoth Gateway itself is quite expensive. So I would recommend using this trap itself just make a couple of uh, modifications make it four high make it one more wider if you feel comfortable like that um but yeah you can definitely use this trap for almost everything almost everything except flies oh one thing i forgot to mention as well this trap here you can also use for trophy onathuses and for tappies uh if you eat the rare flower while you're in the vicinity of a tapihara or a trophy onathus they will actually aggro on you and you can kite them towards this trap as well and the cool so the cool thing about this trap as well is that you can also use it for a Trophio Nathus or a Tappy if you need to. All you need to do is eat it a rare flower and that will cause the Tappy Hara or the Trophio Nathus to aggro on you. And you can simply fly through, run through, Pteranodon through the pillars at the end. And uh, the cool thing about this is you can actually use the Chain Bowlers with this trap because of the fact that there is space in between the pillars to enable you to actually uh, bowler the Trophio Nathus. So that's a cool addition as well. But guys, that's pretty much going to be it for the video. If you're not using these traps, you are missing out. There are quite a few other traps that are specific to certain creatures like a Karkonos trap and a Reaper King trap. I would heavily recommend uh, this channel because I did not put these traps in my videos because they weren't my ideas. I didn't want to be taking this guy's ideas and these traps. So check out Captain Fat Dog's YouTube channel. He's got a whole variety of uh, specific traps for specific creatures. He's got a specific Griffin one, a specific Wyvern, a specific uh, Reaper King, as well as a Karknos one, and they have really helped me out a lot of the time. So check out his channel as well, um, and hopefully you guys enjoyed this video. But other than that, guys, thank you very much for watching, and I will catch you in the next one.